Hi, this is Dennis with an update on the influence model. And this particular section is part two in a three part series. And we're going to focus on engaging all six sources of influence. This third area that we wanted to talk about is comprised of six fairly simple things that we can do, but it requires that we do them deliberately. Engaging all six sources of influence means making the undesirable desirable, surpassing personal limits, harnessing peer pressure, finding strength in numbers, demanding responsibility and designing rewards, as well as changing the environment. With respect to making the undesirable desirable, we go towards personal motivation and how much do we want to do it? We have to ask the questions, how do we take personal satisfaction from the right vital behaviors, as well as everybody in the system? We ask, how do the vital behaviors bring the team members joy? We also ask, how can we get people, ourselves and others to do things we currently do not do or avoid? We help make the undesirable desirable by spotlighting the human consequences of our work. We win hearts by honoring the choices to use the vital behaviors in everyone we encounter. And the strategy is purposefully connected to our values. With respect to surpassing personal limits, this is all about personal ability and how well can we do it? How well can we do what it is we need to do? The source of influence focuses on our need to learn and practice the behaviors. We need to develop greater proficiency at a disciplined, deliberate cadence. We build capability to manage our emotions and we significantly increase the chances for turning vital behaviors into vital habits. There's hope for everyone. Much of skill required is really will and much of the prowess is practice. That's to the mastery you may recall from our discussions about Daniel Pink's work and discoveries. And the strategy here is to ask for disciplined, deliberate practice from every member of the team. With respect to harnessing peer pressure, we focus on social motivation and the question, how do other people encourage the right behaviors? No resource is more powerful and accessible than the trust placed in the innovators and early adopters in our social network. Some change efforts require changes to widely shared norms. Think about the last change effort that fell flat on its face and you recognize what I'm talking about. Team member and stakeholder feedback is really critical here because it allows us to have a healthy dialogue if we make it safe to talk about the high stakes and controversial topics. The power of one and the right ones is really critical. We need to look for heroes who are exhibiting the right behavior, and we need to also create a village. The idea there is that we need to think about how many people share the same values. Strategies for this are on the next page. Finding strength in numbers. How do we help others with information and resources when they're needed or asked? We are smarter and more powerful than any of us are as individuals. That means we have to combine our thinking. Together, we can produce a force greater than the sum of our individual efforts. And when used properly, this enables the power of our relationships. That includes a solidarity between the members of the group, an interdependence upon others in the group, and the strategies are on the following pages. Strategies to harness peer pressure and strategies to find strength in numbers are to pave the way, enlist the power of those who motivate the social system, and seek the support of those who enable the social system. This includes sponsors as well as innovators and early adopters. With respect to demanding responsibility and designing rewards, the structural motivation here is uncovered through asking the question, how does the system encourage the right behaviors? 
we depend first on personal and social motivators to trigger the right behaviors by ourselves and our team members. We need to give feedback immediately on the vital behaviors. Whether the person exhibits it or fails to exhibit it, we need to give feedback right away. We do our best to reward the behaviors and not merely the outcomes. Here, less is more when we do it right. That means we need to give continual feedback, not just wait for some distant time. We want to recognize the behavior as soon as we see it. We also want to use incentives wisely. Incentives can include praise or withholding praise if somebody's embarrassed by it. It requires that we really understand the people on our team and what their internal motivations are. And we want to make sure that we choose extrinsic rewards as a last resort. Strategies to link responsibility and rewards include these three, linking intrinsic rewards to the vital behaviors, using intrinsic rewards that deliver rewards, and using extrinsic rewards last and in great moderation. Changing the environment is really changing the system. We need to ask the question about how does the environment or system support the right behaviors. The final source of influence moves us away from improving personal mastery and social capital, and it focuses on the system. Remember that the impact of the system on human behavior is profound. Remember, please, the red bead experiment and that a bad system beats the best people every time. By examining the power of the system, we amplify our opportunity to change behaviors permanently. We need to learn to notice the behavior that goes on as a consequence of the system and its rewards. We need to make the invisible visible, and we need to make it easy for our team to do the right thing. Strategies to improve system structures we use evidence generated by the science of improvement. We use the key skills to influence the system through our own behavior, and we shape workplace physical environments with knowledge to support the new high-performing behaviors and habits. There are key skills to improve the system. They're gonna be covered in detail in part three of this series, but let's quickly review them. We're gonna talk about coaching people on their behaviors, working in design teams, quality improvement, spread, stakeholder feedback to affect meaningful improvement. And this is illustrated by subject matter expert team members and leaders in their behaviors. Again, we'll cover more of that in the third part of this series. I wanna thank you for your attention and your interest in this topic. If you have questions, please feel free to give me a call at the number listed, and you're also welcome to email me at the address listed as well. We're always interested in learning and improving. If you find any error whatsoever, if you'd like to learn more about this or other programs, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We'd be delighted to talk with you. Thank you.